Thank you. The next item of business is an urgent question from Jackie Bailey. To ask the Cabinet Secretary for finance in the Constitution, what his response is to news that councils are using their reserves to fund services? Cabinet Secretary Derek Mackay. Decisions on the use of reserves are rightly the responsibility of councils to take where it is prudent and sustainable to do so. As today's Audit Scotland report states, there is no prescribed minimal level of usable reserves, but as at 31st of March 2017, local authorities' usable reserves amounted to £1.9 billion, which represents over 18% of the total funding being provided to councils by the Scottish Government this year, and that excludes Orkney and Shetland, who have additional extensive oil-related reserves. Thank you, Billy. Last year, councils cut £524 million from services and used £79 million of their reserves simply to balance their budgets. That's cuts to schools for our children, cuts to social care for our elderly, cuts to basic services like road repairs. Some £1.5 billion of cuts have been made by the SNP to council budgets since 2010. Councils are now in danger of exhausting their reserves and there will be nothing left in a couple of years' time in councils like Murray, Clackmannanshire and North Ayrshire. And added to that, 7,000 jobs have been cut from local government. If local government is such a priority for the Cabinet Secretary, why is the Scottish Government continuing to cut vital services? Cabinet Secretary. It, it is the case, uh, Presiding Officer, that uh, the Scottish Government has actually increased support for local services in our most recent budget, an increase of around £400 million. If you, if you deduct the sums that Labour authorities, yes, Labour authorities chose not to increase the council tax by, that number is reduced. But overall, the support for local services through health and social care integration and the ability to raise the council tax and the multiplier ensured that most, uh, more resources went for local services. In addition to that point, I would say that local government has been treated very fairly in very tough and challenging times at the hands of the UK right-wing Conservative government who have reduced our resources for public expenditure in Scotland in discretionary expenditure. So it is the case that we have treated local authorities very fairly within a very challenging uh, framework. Now, don't just take my word for it. SPICE, the Parliament's Information Service, uh, says so. And if you look at the last couple of years, when you take into account, as I say, the complex nature of health and social care integration and the ability to raise the council tax and the change in multiplier, it shows that actually in the budget that I presented to Parliament, any increase that we would have had in discretionary services, actually local government got an even better settlement than that. But I do accept it's a challenging fiscal environment in which we're all operating, and that's why we need a mature debate on the choices that we have going forward and recognise the pressures on our public services. And I'll continue to be as supportive as I can to Scotland's public services and not least local government. Thank you, Bailey. I am always happy to have that mature debate, but I think it takes the Cabinet Secretary to recognise that when you cut a lot and give a little black, it is still a cut in real terms. And contrary to what the Cabinet Secretary said on radio today, because I listened carefully, the local government share of the overall Scottish budget has fallen. It is the case that the cuts from the UK government has reduced the money available. He is right to say that. But Spice tell us that the cuts from the Tories amount to 1.5% taken over the past three years, if you use the same three years, the cuts to local government made by the SNP amount to 4.6%. The SNP have taken Tory austerity and more than doubled it and passed that on to local government. So what we have, presiding officer, what we have here is SNP turbocharged austerity. Now the cabinet secretary has an opportunity he really does, in almost two weeks' time, to change course and properly fund local government. The question for all of us is, will he be Santa or Scrooge? Cabinet Secretary. I noticed, um, I noticed that Jackie Bailey didn't respond to my comment that if local authorities felt that they didn't have, didn't have enough resources, why was it that Labour authorities chose not to increase the council tax by 3%? including Jackie Bailey's own Labour local authority 
in West Dumbartonshire, and similar to local authorities across the country, there was actually an increase in resources. That is the fact from the budget that I presented to the Scottish Parliament. And what's more, those extra resources were opposed by the Labour Party to go to local services. And that includes, in Jackie Bailey's analysis, she excludes the money from council tax increases, the multiplier and health and social care integration. Jackie Bailey discounts real money uh, in terms of her presentation to the Scottish Parliament. But Scotland's local services have been served very well and very fairly by the decisions of this government, which has, which has protected local services in the face of austerity coming from the right-wing Tory UK government, whose most recent decisions have made this even more challenging. And they groan and they moan. But I look forward to the intervention from the Tories because I've got some very interesting figures here as to how the Tories treat local government in England. Alexander Stewart. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The block grant from Westminster is going up in real terms. Therefore, there is no justification for local government budgets to be reduced by the Scottish Government. And will the Scottish Government therefore commit these funds to support and assist local councils with their commitments over the next financial year? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I think Alexander Stewart has just given us uh, the latest spending commitment from the Tories. Will I commit any Barnet consequentials specifically to local government, as opposed to the health service, as opposed to any other service uh, that the Tories may be interested in? Yet again, the Tories are all over the place on tax and spend. You can't have tax cuts and more expenditure at the same time. The Tories are choosing to spend resources time and time again. But you see, the Tories ask, why is local government feeling pressure? They're feeling pressure because of Tory cuts coming from the Westminster government, and they're feeling further pressure as a consequence of the government. Now, the £2 billion figure that Alexander Stewart has referenced is not a real terms increase to the discretionary uh, funds for our public services. You can't actually spend it on council services, but I'm not surprised that the Tory front bench don't understand that particular fact. Now, I'm interested that the Tories are saying today that their priority is local government, because here's what they actually do in power. I've said that the reduction that we've endured as a Scottish government, uh, we have, uh, you know, as a matter of fact, tried to protect uh, local government. But the real terms reduction, the real terms reduction in Scottish local government is around 5.5% in real terms uh, over a seven year period. And do you know what the reduction is for local government in England? 28.3% real terms reduction. So where the Tories are actually in power, your impact on local services is devastating, whilst at the same time you try and devastate Scotland's public services as well. And that's why we're having a mature and reasonable debate about the powers that we have at our disposal to protect our public services right across the board in the face of this right-wing Chancellor, who's pursuing austerity as a matter of ideology. Richard Lockhead. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary may be aware that the leader of Murray Council criticised Councillor Walter Wilson for causing alarm when he resigned a few days ago because of his Conservative colleagues' extreme right-wing views and the cuts they were contemplating. Yet today, Murray's leader is talking about being a few years away from bankruptcy, which will certainly cause alarm amongst local people. Will he be willing to ask his officials to explore with Murray Council why they, only, they seem to be the only council in Scotland talking in such terms? Secretary. I mean, I've met with a number of uh, council leaders. I'm happy to continue meeting. I meet regularly with COSLA to look at the settlement going forward as well. I engage with COSLA on matters of distribution. And of course, the government will try to be uh, supportive. But uh, Richard Lockhead has fairly characterised the administration uh, in, in Murray. As I say, the government will be helpful, uh, but some people should maybe apply some pressure to the right-wing Tory government in Westminster as well, because essentially the reductions that this parliament, this government and this country are facing in real terms for the spend on local services is coming from the direction of the Tory party. Yeah. Yeah. Patrick Harvey. 
Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary has criticised councils for complaining about their financial position if they didn't choose to use the flexibility to increase council tax. Isn't it clear, though, that the very many of us who have long criticised council tax as a fundamentally unfair tax need to take responsibility for that? And in particular, he's in a position to decide how much revenue should be raised fairly, progressively, through reform of income tax and how many councils should be put under pressure to use an unfair council tax change uh, to raise their revenues. Isn't it clear that people on his salary and people on my salary need to be paying more income tax next year than we did this year if we want to fund our local services properly? Cabinet Secretary. Um, Patrick Harvey uh, touches on the point that I've made around the uh, discussion we're having around the role of income tax uh, in Scot Scotland's budget. I'm happy to engage with all parties uh, on that. I'm actively doing that engaging with stakeholders and the public as well. And I look forward to presenting the budget on the 14th of December eh, for our tax proposition, eh, as well as our tax eh, position um, eh, as well. And as I say, that eh, debate is very much eh, live and kicking.